Okay. Um. Yeah, so a lot of things got reduced now. Hmm. The main quest isn't here, is it? area that I haven't checked yet. Wow, they just double the size. There are leaves around. Come on, they could have taken a little shovel. longer for that. Uh, there should be a chapter. I still haven't done the other one for Tainari. The squash. Oh, it's the one that I'm not tell us about to accompany them. automatically. Few. So let's see. <coughs> hmm. Is the chat button not working again? Time to go. Oh, then we have to talk to her. And Astra Avisask. We meet again, you two. Hi, Catherine. Do you have any commissions for us today? Commissions, huh? Hmm. Let me think. I don't know. She being a robot and stuff, shouldn't she just know if there is or isn't? Oh, how about this? Please attend the Academia's Academic Symposium this afternoon and recite a love poem on stage. Oh. Uh, That's a commission. Wait, say what now? And if possible, please also use your camera to capture the reaction of the audience upon finishing the poem. Mm. Huh? What kind of commission is that? The film is imagining it. The audience will definitely have a reaction. I see. It appears that you're not interested in this commission. Would we get paid? In that case, please go to Port Armos and convince the Eremites there to spend some time volunteering at the local orphanage. Hmm. Hey, that's not any better. Maybe. Isn't that just as forbidding? No, we can beat them. Mercenaries and orphanage really don't go together. Mm-hmm. I'm sure the mercenaries will have some interesting reactions as well. Mm. Uh, Paimon's gotta ask, just who exactly has been submitting these commissions to the Adventurers Guild? Oh, the commissioner? Hmm, mm, well, actually, I just wanted to see the two of you in action. Uh, and Nehida, right? Last time, she, she kept Nehida's voice, didn't she? <laughs> Was it so obvious? I was hoping you would actually take one of those commissions. That kind of chance to observe humans doesn't come by often. Ah, so it's Nahida. Paimon just knew Catherine wouldn't crack those kinds of jokes. When did you get into her head? Hmm, from when she said, add Astra Adasosk. So it's been you this whole time? Ugh. Are you done resting up, Nahida? Yes. I've been sleeping ever since we parted ways, and I even had a really, really long dream. Hmm, so the Akash can take away the dreams of gods? It was another dream about the Subzerus Festival, except it was a happy one. In my dream, I was sitting in the middle of a flower terrace, and everyone in Sumeria City was holding hands as they danced in circles around me. They danced round and round, and everyone looked really happy. I also got to sit on a gigantic flower carriage. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, raised me really, really high above the ground, and I was throwing an endless amount of Yalda candies at the children. You know, Nahida, maybe your dream is how the Subzerus Festival really should be. It's meant to be a joyous time where everyone gets together to celebrate your birthday. The reality? Huh? 
Wasn't I describing a really happy dream? Why are you both looking at me like that? Wait... Could this be an example of the emotion known as pity? No, no! We aren't pitying you! That would only make everything worse. We just don't want you to feel too sad. By the way, have you had a chance to visit Dunyarzad? How's she doing? The Homiyanis haven't allowed any visitors after the festival, so we haven't been able to check on her. Uh, that's why, obviously, yeah. I think yes, I paid her a visit right after I woke up. She was resting at the time. Her condition is stabilized. However, since Elazar is a manifestation of the withering on the human body, we can only cure it by finding a way to take care of Ermansalt's own withering. But for the moment, our top focus should still be figuring out what the sages are up to and what they're planning. Right. Who knows what'll happen if they manage to pull off another scheme like the Samsara of the Subzeru's Festival. So our first priority should be investigating and putting a stop to the Sage's activities. As for how we should pull that off, let's discuss it somewhere else. There are too many adventurers around here. Oh, good point. Uh, sorry adventurers, we're gonna be borrowing Catherine for a little while. Mm. Wow, that's so much farther. Let's continue our chat here. Okay, so do you have any ideas on how we can investigate the sages, Nahida? Actually, I've already done a little bit of work on that. But for now, I want to hear your thoughts. Do we know anything? Well, says a key figure in academia. Well, says a student infiltrated the sage's carters. We could grab someone close to the sages and question them. Yeah, that. We're in the dark as of now. Since we still don't know anything about their goals, any rash move could tip them off and lead to terrible consequences. If only we had somebody with a higher hierarchy. After all, every person in Sumeru City is one of their hostages. Uh, says a key figure in the academia. I've already tried that, but all the key members of the Academia, even the core of 30 guards, intentionally avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. Mm. It seems that from the very beginning, they've been guarding against info leaks from the Akasha. Of course, it could also be because they're weary of me. Well... Hmm... I mean, he, she's leaving Catherine unconscious during that, but couldn't she leave her conscious? So, can she plant the knowledge into everybody in Sumeru so they rise Have against the sages? Have you already caught the sages' attention? I'm guessing not yet, but this trusting me would make perfect sense if they've ever paid attention to the urban legends about me. In any case, I probably can't take over their minds directly. This says a student infiltrate the sage's carters. No way, that's too risky. You mean, it'd be too easy to get caught? No, it's not that. We shouldn't involve innocent students in this. A single mistake could completely ruin their lives. Doing that would be ignoring the safety of my people for my own selfish goals. How is that any different from what the sages are doing? That's a good point. Spoken like the god of Sumeru! I can't think of anything else. Hmm. Are we really out of ideas? Nahida, you're super smart, so you already have something in mind, right? Don't keep us in suspense, spill the beans already! According to a popular theory from the Vahumana Darshan of the Academia, rejecting impractical motions at the beginning of a planning session will give more weight to the actual proposal. Okay, okay, but aren't you the god of wisdom? You don't have to use that kind of gimmick to make us take your ideas seriously. Well, 
I've been thinking that if I can't directly possess the leaders, and if I can't get ordinary people involved, then I should find someone who's already involved, but hasn't decided to side with the sages. You're saying we should recruit a spy? Hmm... That does sound like it could work. Oh, before coming back, we met someone named Alhatham. He seems like he acts alone, and he likes doing stuff behind the academia's back. They probably aren't in cahoots. Actually, I already have someone in mind. Do you still remember that female scholar named Sataria? No. Sataria. Paima remembers now. Isn't she the one who's always trailing behind the Grand Sage of the Academia? We ran into her basically every time the sub Festival repeated itself. Mm. You could even say we're old enemies by now. Yeah, so if you can. I thought she was one that without Akashis. Paimon still remembers the smug and mean way she always spoke to Nilu. Mm hmm I've always liked observing all kinds of people, and Sataria has always stood out from the crowd. She was born in the desert, and was hailed as their greatest genius. Her academic gifts allowed her special admission into the academia, and also gave her the opportunity to serve as the sage's assistant. Oh, Paimon didn't know she was from the desert. She must be pretty special then. Paimon feels like most of the desert dwellers around the city are working as mercenaries. The name Sitaria means star. When she lived in the desert, she shone like the brightest star in the night sky. Later on, she was chosen by the sun. The star was given a place in the daytime sky to complement the sun's dazzling light. Soon after, the star witnessed the sun scorching the earth, which brought forth many disasters. The star began to waver. Instead of staying beside such a sun, wouldn't it be better to return and light up part of the night sky? But in the end, she couldn't give up the radiance of daytime. To cope with her shame, the star buried her guilt and closed her eyes. Is no longer meant for those are Sitaria's two your thoughts, right? From the sound of it, Sitaria's just hung up on the research opportunities here. But she doesn't really support the academia. She still feels guilty about not doing more for the desert, right? She's just running away from her problems. Indeed. When they are presented with complex moral issues, Many people will simply plug their ears and go with the flow until the problem can't be fixed anymore. She's suppressing a lot of guilt, but before she realized it, she had already become the sage's accomplice. She can't deny her part in their schemes anymore. Mm -hmm. Sounds exactly like the person we need. Right. We must somehow make her face her problems again. That way, not only can we get useful intel from her, but she can also use it as an opportunity to redeem herself. From my past observations, Sitaria will take a day off from the academia every 10 days to do some shopping in the city. Tomorrow afternoon just happens to be a shopping day for her. That'll be our chance. To prepare, let's go check out some of her favorite spots and have a quick chat with a few of the vendors there. What's that? What? In the light of alternating day cycles, one can see the homeward figure of the lighthouse on the bridge. Uh, what is this? A riddle or a proverb? Something? Alternating day cycles, homeward figure. Oh. Hello, traveler. Are you interested in Drusus? This riddle, too. It is really a riddle. It was set up by an academia researcher named Drusus. As far as I know, he's an eccentric even among the academia crowd. He loves to talk about riddles with anyone, as well as research all kinds of encryption methods. But some of his riddles are too incomprehensible. Not so many people are willing to do with him. So he came up with the solve riddles for a prize idea. So, but this riddle actually hints at a treasure trove. 
You just have to show up at the right place at the right time using the right method to and you give get this treasure. Trusus also gave a hint saying that the location are all within Sumero City. But as you can see, no adventure has been able to succeed. You can certainly try if you're interested. But if you ask me, I tell you to do something else more productive. Okay, I may do that after once. Uh, I got information. Time to go. Uh, it's not there. This should be Sataria's favorite fortune telling spot. Uh, so should we ask the fortune teller about Sataria? No, I already have enough information on Sataria. The most important thing now is for you to pay attention to the vendor's talking style and key characteristics. Mm. Talking style and key characteristics? My poor lost lambs. Have you become troubled over your fates? The divine voice of wisdom often echoes between mine ears. If thou be blessed today by the gods, I may be able to show you the way. Huh? Really? Nahida, you've been whispering things to her? Shh! <clears throat> My friend here has some doubts regarding his future. Can we get a fortune reading for him? Hmm... Of course, of course! In that case... Ahem... It would seem that Harut and Marut are quite wary of you. Perhaps, at some time in the past, you have somehow offended the gods. No, a single one, specifically. I'm good with the others. Only mocking the god of Animo, questioning the lord of Geo's financial savviness, and brawling with the god of Electro. Do those count? They aren't offended. Hmm? Oh, nothing. Go on, pick an aspect for her to divine. Uh, health and love. Uh, love. Love prospects? <laughs> no problem at all. What does work? Didn't Mona say that? Just her astrologer thing was the true way to see the future. Um... <laughs> the gods have spoken. The truth shall be revealed. One who is fated to cross your path will appear on... On... Huh? So... So <laughs> many people will fall for you. How could that be? Harut, Marut, did you two spoil my divination? I've never read a fortune so absurd. Uh, actually, Paimon thinks this is probably the most accurate fortune telling you've ever done. Hey, Paimon wasn't around during all those dates. <clears throat> I admit that the orientation of today's celestial matrix is uh, suboptimal. As such, there will be no charge. Mm, can I see the other Is option? Is that so? Well, that can't be helped. If you were to bring some food offerings for Hart and Mart on your next visit, perhaps they could help you reverse the wheels of fate. Are we supposed to do that? I've never seen Harut and Marut be so wary of anyone. Sataria's favorite stalls? Yep. It belongs to a king. His father helped Sataria a lot when she first moved to Sumeru City, so she still comes by whenever she has time. When I start talking with him, listen carefully to the details of our conversation. Ah, dear customers! Would you like to look at some pottery? We caught wind of your great craftsmanship, so we specifically came to take a look. Oh, I recognize you. Aren't you Miss Catherine from the Adventurer's Guild? 
<laughs> Sounds like I'm in for some big business. Speaking of, where did you learn this trade? I suppose you could say it all started with my dad. He's a mason by trade, but I picked up an interest in clay while apprenticing for him. After that, I began making pottery by myself in secret. And I simply changed trades when my works turned out well. Although it's a pity that I'm no longer making much use of the knowledge provided to me by the Akasha. That's nice. You're making a living doing something you love. Hmm. So is your father still working as a mason? Oh no, not anymore. A few years back, he fell from a roof and broke his leg. Since he had already saved enough mora over all these years, he's just enjoying the retired life in Port Ormos nowadays. I see. We wish him peace and happiness in his retirement. I'll have someone in charge of logistics at the guild come by another day for some goods. We'll leave you to it. Take care now. No problem. Rest easy, all our goods are sure to meet your every need. That was my first time talking with Miss Catherine. <laughs> I'm sure I sounded a bit nervous. Miss mm, Catherine actually has feelings, free will and stuff, or she just follows her program. This should be our final stop. Sitaria's always thinking of this restaurant when she's working at the Academia. So she always comes by whenever she's out in the city. Nahida, you've really thought of everything! <laughs> it's my duty to protect Samiri's citizens, after all. Hi there. I feel like I've seen you down by the docks before. Huh? Sorry, I don't quite remember. If I recall, you were having a discussion with someone about shipbuilding at the time. Ah, oh, that's right. I've always been really interested in feats of marine engineering. After all, I grew up in Liyue Harbor and spent my entire childhood staring at the ships going in and out of the port. I came to Sumeru to study, but failed to make it into the academia due to my lack of talent. But... I'm still discussing all kinds of problems with different scholars. And I'm continuing to study and perform research from the restaurant's basement. I'm sure I'll get to the academia after their next round of exams. What an admirable spirit for learning. Amazing! Uh, sure. But you'll find hardworking people wherever you go. So this restaurant has a basement as well? Huh. First I've heard of it. That's right. It's not usually open to patrons. Most of the time, employees use it for breaks or to hold private events. I see. Yes, that makes sense. Well, good luck with your studies, Miss Chishan. You should sit there. <laughs> Thank you so much. As long as I can make it into the academia as an official student, I'll be happy. <laughs> I must have met her somewhere. <sighs> Why can't I remember? Yeah, there's something wrong with you. She stays just there all day for everybody that passes by to see. They so, just never notice. Is that everybody? Mm -hmm. Three familiar faces should be enough for Sataria. Mm. Uh, what's the point of all the information we've collected? Nahida, you still haven't told us how you're planning to make Sataria face her problems. Inception. Sataria is already used to avoiding her problems, so we must find a way to break through her usual sensibilities. I remember that you mentioned that the Aramites in Port Ormos are all making a fuss about the upcoming resurrection of the Scarlet King. Although it's all just a boatload of nonsense, the faith of her homeland may turn out to be Sataria's soft spot. Hmm... It would be nonsense, I thought we would fight him eventually. Oh, Paimon gets it now! You want to take advantage of the guilt Sataria feels about her homeland! 
Yeah, this sounds like a bad guy's plan for Although us. Although she knows she should return home to help the people of the desert, all she's done is conspire with the sages. If King, there's nobody. She just said the other words. Why did they wrote here now? He never heard that stretch before. Uh, if King Dashford was to criticize the transactions, if King Dashford was to make demands, etc. No, criticize. Hmm. So, how do we set that up? Well, the Scarlet King is long gone, and Sitari is also too smart to fall for any simple tricks. If we simply engaged her under the guise of the Scarlet King's believers, she would definitely be weary of us, and we may not get anywhere. Why not just say the King Deshret? But if we were to borrow some of her close acquaintances to talk with her, her reaction would probably be very different. So you mean you're going to possess those people we just talked to? Yep. Possess them through the Akasha. Imply that they've already converted to the faith of the Scarlet King. And then convey our made-up will of the Scarlet King. Mm. As long as everything goes smoothly, we'll get through to Sataria for sure. She'll never guess that we had anything to do with it. Ah, so that's how you're going to use all the info we collected on these people. It's so that you won't slip up and break form. Possessing them will only work if you can manage to pass off as them. Exactly. So, best of luck with impersonating them. We? Oui. Huh? Best of luck? What? We don't know how to possess anyone! That's no problem at all. I'll just share all their senses with you once I've possessed them. As long as you're also wearing an Akasha terminal, the effect will basically be as if you've possessed them yourself. Mm, I think you should just go to a dream and pretend to be them. That is pretty convenient. But why does he have to do this? Can't you do it yourself? Although I've been observing humans for a while, I've never been good at imitating them. Hmm. You're not wrong. It's always been painfully obvious whenever you try to pass as Catherine. I'll try my best. If it was at all possible, I would have preferred to leave these people alone, but seeing how things are now, I probably should just accept it and push on. Yeah, don't beat yourself up over it. We're only doing this to help everyone, and we'll only be borrowing them for a little while anyway. It's still not quite right. All right, okay. then let's give it a go tomorrow afternoon. No, no, here's tomorrow, right? No, it's today. Yeah. to be close shouldn't we just hide somewhere and use an akasha oh here she comes satari is here let's quietly follow her once she starts talking to her acquaintances we'll find a safe spot to begin possessing them mm. as for how we'll sway her to our side i'll leave that to you i trust you'll know what to say yeah there'll be a right option uh, along the way I'm feel kind of nervous. Okay, let's go. Looks like they've already started talking. Let's find a hiding spot and get started. Shouldn't we possess them before they start talking so the person we're possessing just 
doesn't just pass out during a middle conversation. Are we hiding? Mm. Is she possessing Catherine and her at the same time? That's right. You really can't force anything when it comes to love. And besides, everyone around me has a very different background and outlook. Uh, are you still listening to me, Nabia? Oh, of course I'm listening. You were talking about troubles with your love life, right? I heard hey. everything you said. In the end, that's the Trevor saying. Uh, okay of. then. You just seemed a little distracted for a moment there. <laughs> Strange. Your cats seem pretty worked up. Is something wrong? I always thought they were quiet, happy kitties. Oh, what are their names again? Well, I want you to purposefully say things wrong. Harold and Terrell. Hmm, hmm. Are you sure? Those aren't ringing a bell for some reason. Come on, they weren't that different. Ah, well... Actually, they have many names. Which names I use depends on my mood. Huh, I see. I imagine that must be hard for the kitties, too. Yeah, I doubt. Ahem. So, which fortune do you want me to read for you today? You must have come for another echo of the divine voice of wisdom. Hmm... I'd like to get another reading on my love prospects, but to be perfectly honest with you, I feel like I've been a real mess recently. I thought we were talking about that once we started. A mess? Well, um, could you do a reading on how long it'll take me to finish my current project at work? I really just want to get it over with. I hear you. No problem at all. Uh, the gods will reveal the truth. Um... Mm, the guys have spoken. Oh ho ho ho, the guys have spoken. <laughs> Sorry, your new laugh is just so hilarious. I couldn't help it. And there's no bar indicating I'm losing progress or anything, so I'll, I'll choose the worst option. Oh, and whatever uh, possible here. Please pay no mind to those kinds of details. The gods are asking. Sitaria, why haven't you gone home? Why haven't I gone home? Do the gods really know everything I've been thinking about? Is this gods they are mentioned here supposed to be the Archons? Shouldn't they ask just Sitaria, a single Sitaria, why don't you just go thing? home? It's a demand now instead of a question. Oh, the gods seem to be truly upset. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I know I failed the gods. Please pass on my most sincere apologies and ask for their divine forgiveness. Mm, I don't know if a scholar should be so invested and in our if I may like ask, that. Nabia, is there a specific god who's speaking to you right now? No. Hmm. Can she just picture me in my mind or something? What an inconsiderate and naive question. The god who is speaking to me is, of course, the wisest and mightiest of all, the Scarlet King. The S Scarlet King? No wonder he would make such a demand of me. Oh, wait a second. The Scarlet King passed away a long time ago. Even though news of the Scarlet King's resurrection has been spreading like wildfire, it's all just a misinformation campaign from the Academia. How can the Scarlet King still exist in real life? Oh, that's a misinformation campaign? Oh, good to know. Good to know. I, I don't think should have told her that, but okay. Uh, it's just a misinformation what campaign. insolence! I am the Scarlet King's most loyal believer! Do you wish to refute his voice of wisdom? 
Oh, no, no. As a child of the desert, I am only reveling in his power upon learning that his divine glory has touched even this city. <sighs> I will think very carefully about his demand of me. I'm sorry. I must go now. Uh, I want to be kind of suspicious that everybody she meets <gasps> will be talking about the Scarlet King. Yeah, we have Wi-Fi. We don't have to be nearby. Ooh, she just ran off in a hurry. She looked pretty upset too. Well done. Sitaria didn't seem to suspect anything amiss. To have something she's been trying desperately to avoid show up out of nowhere and berate her, that must have shaken her to the core. Yeah, and look at the poor girl. She has no idea what just happened. It seems like you understand human emotions really well after all. All I know are some abstract Haribata theories. Hmm? In any case, my time with you has shown a lot of them to be utterly useless. I'm still trying to make sense of everything. Anyway, enough of that. Let's hurry and catch up to Sataria. Okay, we don't have to. We have our fight. Let's possess the next person. Right on cue. Let's get ready to possess him right away. Just wait. Oh. It's okay. I just got caught up in something. Oh, actually, didn't you ask me to help you look for work? What kind of work were you looking for again? Uh, <laughs> what's true, this guy? Gardening? Know. But don't you hate everything to do with plants? I still remember getting mad at you for secretly throwing away the bonsai that I gave you as a present. Oh. Um, well, uh... You see, a friend told me that the secret to self-improvement is to work on things you're not so good at. <sighs> Fair enough. I didn't think that was something you would consider. Speaking of, how's he doing? Is he feeling any better? Feeling a lot better. He's working more now. He's feeling a lot better. He can lift stuff now. Um... Both seem kind of the same. I mean, apparently his feet is better now. He can lift stuff now. Huh? Wasn't he nursing a leg injury? If I recall correctly, his strong arms had always been his pride and joy. Uh, he sprained his arm a while back while trying to show okay. off his strength. I thought you'd heard. Actually, while we're talking about him, is he still living in Port Ormos? Yeah, he's been retired there for a while. Mm. If you could find the time, please write him a letter. Please pass on that recently, faith in the Scarlet King has taken root in Port Ormos and has begun to spread across Sumeru. Well, if he's in Port Ormos, shouldn't he know about that? He has a quick temper and has always been a devout follower of the Dendro Archon. I don't want him to get into a fight with those Scarlet King believers because of a difference in beliefs. Oh, so who are you siding with in all of this? The Academia or the Scarlet King? Uh, I... Mm, the Academia isn't on the side of the Dendro Archon, so I'd say they are a third side. <sighs> I'm so jealous of you. You were born a child of the desert, yet you chose to betray the Scarlet King. And now you spend all your time with those crooks from the Academia. Akeem, you don't mean you've also become a believer of the Scarlet King? We're gonna tell her the truth eventually, right? We just screw up with all her friends. What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise Scarlet King? In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? can't pick a side? Me? Whoa! 
Paimon had no idea you'd be so good at this. For our new service to start getting to the role. You really zeroed in on the issue and put it right in front of her. It might feel a bit overwhelming for Sataria. But once everything is over, I'll be sure to pay her a visit to her mind and explain everything. Anyway, let's keep going. Why don't you just go to her mind and explain everything? They almost killed a person. Come on! Sataria's already started talking when she... Yeah. So, she's Sean. Have you noticed anything weird in the city lately? Okay, now this seems like the beginning of a conversation. Like, unlike the other two. as if someone was trying to preach to you about something? Uh, no, I've been spending all my time studying in the basement. I've been spending all my time studying in the attic. Wait, did you just say attic? I thought this place didn't have an attic. Also, don't you usually study in the basement? Uh, well... The restaurant recently added an attic. I've been studying there because it has better lighting. <laughs> oh, right. Speaking of strange things... I celebrated the Subzerus Festival so many times that I lost count. That was really weird. Wait, how could you be aware of that? That should be impossible. Nothing in the report indicated anything like that. Are you still failing to realize that the Academia's lowly tricks could never deceive all of Sumeru's citizens? Um, they don't change subjects. Jishan, uh, uh, don't tell me that you've converted to the Scarlet King as well! I, I, I think I lost something. What does that have to do with the... What an absurd question. You make it sound like I should be ashamed for becoming a believer of the Scarlet King. In reality, shouldn't you be the one who is ashamed? You, who worked side by side with the Academia, and treated people as nothing more than experimental subjects? Please, please stop! Even now, Satari is still trying to run from her problems. Did I push too hard? She can no longer justify everything to herself. Hey, she's trying to talk to the guards! What should we do? This is the most important part of all. Quick, get ready. Mercenary, you're a member of the Corps of Thirty, correct? Please help me pass a message to the Matra right away. The situation in the city is getting out of control. Please, try to remain calm, miss. Tell me what's happening in the city. Heretics are infiltrating the city, and they've already converted many residents to their side. Heretics? What kind of heresy are you talking about? The Scarlet King! Many people I know have suddenly started believing in him, but he's long dead. It's impossible. Well, everybody's is true. Worries more about the previous Ar Daniel Ark on the walls. That is that, then the current one. What's wrong? They believe in, in the Miss Sataria, Scarlet King. Nothing is impossible. Y you know my name? The Scarlet King is immortal, and all who defy him will one day pay the price. I think if he returns, he'll be kind of mad at this. You must face the truth, Sataria. You tread a treacherous path. And the longer you ignore it, the tighter the Academia's grasp on you will become, and the deeper you will be ensnared. Child of the Scarlet King, never forget that the desert that belongs to you lies elsewhere. What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise Scarlet King? In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? We what an absurd question. Two minutes ago. You make it sound like I should be ashamed for becoming a believer of the Scarlet King. Sitaria, why haven't you gone home? Uh, uh. Um, 
Well, then that ends up on her mind. I, it oh, seems that just... no matter where I run, I only keep finding more believers of the Scarlet King. I have to say, this is a familiar feeling. I've also been running from my guilt this whole time. Guilt over my part in the Sage's plans, and from ignoring the letters from the children of my homeland. But no matter how much I may try to ignore and get rid of it, my guilt always comes back. You should follow your heart. You won't necessarily lose your research opportunities by facing the truth. Besides, did you really want to conduct your research while carrying such heavy feelings of guilt? <sighs> How do you know me so well? Are you truly just a believer of the Scarlet King? Or are you the god himself? That's not important. The important thing is to pass judgment on the Academia and its sages, and to correct their mistakes. If you could provide some assistance in this matter, perhaps it could serve as a form of atonement. I've actually never believed in the gods, but I've always believed in serendipity. Your appearance must be a fated opportunity for me to get out of this wretched situation. Please tell me, what can I do for you? Great, you find a her. <clears throat> How much do you know about the Sage's current activities? I was just one of the designers for the Mast Dream Harvest Scheme, which is what happened around the Subzeru's festival. Just one of the designers. But I know very little about the full scope of the overall project. I'd assume that only staff with the highest clearance would have access to those confidential documents. Aren't you always next to the... Top I've hatch, just been working to meet the Grand Sage's specified requirements. However, there's something that's been really bothering me. I heard that a scholar who was previously expelled has returned to the city. And even the sages are still quite wary of him. Mm. And that's because that even the sages are still wary To of fight him. against the academia, we will need to figure out the nature and the purpose of their work. Is there a way for us to get access to the confidential documents you mentioned? It should be possible if we're willing to take some risks. After all, I'm an assistant to the Grand Sage, and I've been working on many tasks outside of the project. One thing, though, I won't be able to transfer the documents to you through the Akasha once I get my hands on them. The Sages have always closely monitored all activities within the Akasha. Hmm. Um, let me see... Uh, let's use the most primitive method. Send someone to pick up the documents tomorrow evening at the Academia entrance. The Academia entrance? Wouldn't that be too conspicuous? Don't worry about that. I assure you, this won't be a trap. I'm only suggesting this location because it'll draw more scrutiny for me to leave the Academia again. It'll be safest for me to distract the guards long enough to hand you the documents. All right, I trust you. So, uh, if I were to successfully complete this task, would it mean I've atoned for my wrongdoings? Um, that'll depend on the judgment of the Dendro Archon. The Dendro Archon? That's right. Her people are the ones we have endangered. As the God of Wisdom, she's also the one responsible for judging and guiding the scholars. Maybe it's time for me to find a god to believe in. Just as Nahida predicted, we've managed to bring Sataria to our side! The Traveler's execution was ingenious. He's the one who deserves all the praise. Well, now that we've made plans to meet again tomorrow evening, all we can do is pray for Sataria's mission to go off without a hitch. Pray? But if we're going to pray to the gods, Aren't we just praying to you, God of Wisdom and Guardian of the Scholars? Me? No, no. The truth is the true Guardian of Scholars. I've always believed that. Anyway, let's meet again tomorrow evening at the Adventurer's Guild.
Way up there. Time to go. Catherine, we're here. Oh, um, you are the other Catherine, right? That's right. I suppose I'm the other Catherine in your mind. Uh, can we just call her Nahida? We're on a secret mission tonight, so we need to protect Catherine's identity. Hmm. But anybody calls her Nahid. Everybody calls her Kuzanali. Yep, Paimon's right. We cannot fully rule out the chance that the meetup tonight is just a trap. If something were to happen, my existence may be the only trump card we'll be able to play. After all, the Academia should still be unable to confirm the existence of my consciousness in the outside world. Yep, yep. Exactly! Just what Paimon was thinking! I saw how about that. Mm, anyway, enough about that. Let's just make sure to be on our guard. Speaking of which... Don't you feel like something's off? Off? What? What do you feel is off? It's just a little too quiet around here. It's the middle of the night. Of course it's quiet. It's not the middle You're not of the getting night. paranoid, are you? No... I think he's right. It really is a lot quieter than usual. If you look around, there seems to be fewer people on the streets. I'm not sure if this is the case for the entire city, though. Huh. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Maybe Sataria figured out a way to not only distract the guards, but also to get everyone to go to sleep early, just so we can exchange the documents in peace. Shouldn't this be closer to the academia? Dangerous. I also can't way quite figure out why things feel a little off. But now that we're here, let's go ahead and meet her as we planned. Can't you just access the knowledge from the Akasha? Well, regardless, as long as you're here with us, Paimon feels a little safer. This seems like a uh. little. There really the aren't many people again. out right now. Let's hope it'll be this quiet in front of the Academia, and that Sataria managed to distract all the guards. Time to go! triumphant hero returns at last and to a rather spectacular welcome even if i do say so myself you're the outcast expelled from the academia indeed i am although these days they tend to call me the doctor oh. <laughs> if you're looking for your researcher friend she has already been taken into confinement with some basic caution, she could have discovered the listening device on her person. Clearly, she lacks the degree of rigor expected of a true scholar. The people of Samir City! What have you done to them? I simply made some minor adjustments to their Akasha terminals. Now they can deposit information directly into the subconscious. As you can see, all these lovely people now believe this traveler is a hero who has just saved the world. <laughs> My experiment is a success. And now it seems they can no longer hold back their sheer adoration. Oh no! What should we do? These are all just regular people! Leave now! You need to get out of here! What? That guy's a Fatui Harbinger! We can't just 
leave you here? Nor can I abandon the people of Sumeru! Um, can we break the ter terminals? Don't worry, we'll meet again outside of the city. They need to change the sword. I see. It's pathetic. You appear to have overridden their mental faculties with your own consciousness. To possess such a powerful mind, you must be the god of wisdom. your breath first. Uh, is the Hida going to be okay? We only made it out because of her. Uh, she can jump between minds. Hopefully, hopefully she'll be fine. Paimon wasn't counting on running into a new Harbinger here, let alone such a high-ranking one. That guy was number two. So scary. Mm, he called himself the Doctor. Remember, Tainari told us about him. Sataria did say that someone who once got expelled from the Academia came back recently. And that even the Sages are weary of him. Yep, sounds like she must have been talking about the Doctor. Uh, we underestimated this guy's problem. We underestimated the number of parties involved. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you yeah. also got to attack the book from the beginning. in the picture, we're no longer just dealing with the Academia. They're in cahoots with the Fatui! But what are the Fatui after this time? Another Gnosis? Yeah. We need to find out which we're with Nahida. Yeah, things would be a lot easier with Nahida's help. Nahida said we'll meet again outside of the city. But we can't just keep waiting around, right? Uh, let's start our own investigation. Let's go find someone else who might be involved. Uh, you mean... Let's go find Tainari. Oh, Tainari. right! Wasn't he invited by the sages to work on some project when we were staying with him in the Vidya Forest? That has to be the same project! Even though he turned it down at the time, he might still know something. There's no time to lose. Let's go to Gundarvaville. Hmm. There's something happening here. Time to go. There's things that should be fine. Time to go. Yeah, even Catherine's back. Right there. Hmm. A blonde haired traveler and a floating fairy. We've got you, all right. Take a look around. You've fallen right into our trap. Come on, this happens every day. Why are we talking to them? Uh, are you mercenaries from the Core of 30? Did you come here to arrest us? Core of 30? We're nothing like those government lapdogs who don't even get scraps for their work. We are an elite brigade that commands the highest commission rate in all of Sumeru. We're here on the orders of a client known only as the Outcast. The Outcast? An Outcast from the Academia? Sounds like the Doctor. 
But why wouldn't the doctor just send the Fatui after us? Have I not seen Fatui in Sumeru so far? I, I don't think so. Local mercenaries might have an edge over Fatui. Maybe he's asking, taking advantage of the Academy's resources. No. Still wasting time on idle chit chat. Yeah. We'll shut you up soon enough. Mm -hmm. Get them! Uh, you're up, traveler! Yeah, this happens all the time. I'm walking oh, around, some of them show up. I beat them up, and we're done. Stabilize! Fallen leaves! Adorn my knights! I'll trap! In shroud! That's close God. enough! God. I'll be back. Wind Strider. I hear everything. Ah, it isn't over yet. Here comes the appointment. <sighs> that was pretty rough. Yeah. Is that what elite mercenaries are like? It probably won't be long before we see more of them. Yeah. Looks like we'll have to keep our guards up. But this doctor guy seems like a pretty tough opponent. Yeah. He knew exactly where to set up an ambush. Did he predict that we would try to find Kainari? He seems more he's smarter than stronger. Uh, I think going it could up be against him smart people is easier tough. than anyway, Signora. let's keep going. Time to go. Oh, it's the Traveler and Paimon. What are you two doing back here? Kale, it's nice to see you again. Are you doing all right? I... To be honest, I'm not doing too well. My Elazar has been progressing at a faster rate lately. I'm finding it harder to complete more intricate tasks. As a result, Master Tainari is taking me off the patrol schedule. He will only allow me to stay here and coordinate other people's tasks. Oh, Kale. Um, it seems that curing Irmiso is our only chance. Speaking of Tainari, did he go off on patrol? We're here to talk to him. Oh, Master Tainari? He just left the Avidia Forest a little while ago. He was headed to Party's DI. I don't know where that is, but huh? He left? But isn't Tainari always saying that he never wants to leave the Avidia Forest? He even turned down the Sage's invitation. No, he didn't like to go to Summer City. I thought it was weird too. Master Tainari always <laughs> prioritizes his work as a forest watcher above everything. He almost never leaves his post. He left in a hurry this time, though. He didn't give a reason. No, I only found out that he left through a message oh. he left behind. He also made sure to delegate all his tasks using a schedule. Oh. <sighs> to leave in <coughs> such a hurry? I'd guess he had something urgent to take care of. Hmm. Master Tainari originally studied in the Amorta Darshan of the Academia, and part of the eye is something like the Amorta's research base. Many rare shrubs and grasses have been planted there for research. Mm. I know that before he became a forest watcher, Master Tainari once spent a long time conducting research at Party's DI. A research base, huh? Gotta wonder what kind of research Tainari just decided to work on all of a sudden. Oh, we don't have a lot of time, so let's go look for him at Party's DI. Uh, don't push us so hard, Colin. Please take care of yourself, Colin. Uh. Don't worry, I'm fine. I'm used to living with Elazar by now. If you run into Master Tainari, please send him my regards. Got it, will do! See you later, Kale! I had already made up my mind, to be honest with you. So I didn't try to hide my current condition. <sighs> Don't worry about me, I'll be fine. 
I, I don't think I got it here, but... Uh, yeah, ready. there's Let's some go. extra here. Everything's ready. Uh, ah, that's the place. Huh? Wait! Look who it is! Um, isn't she getting in the way of Catherine's job? Uh, nah, he did. Nah, he did. Thank goodness you're okay! We were so worried about you! You are not he though, right? Uh, you haven't been reprogrammed by the doctor, have you? Hey! This was supposed to be a touching reunion, but you're ruining the moment! Actually, it's very smart of the Traveler to be wary of me right now. After all, the Doctor has shown that his technology can apparently even control human minds. Plus, it's not like you could have known what happened after we split up and I was facing the Doctor by myself. Yeah, what Even a pool of stagnant water after a torrential storm can occasionally pass as a patch of sky. Hmm. Paimon feels like only the real Nahida could come up with such an obscure analogy. I agree. Huh? But I wasn't trying to win your trust or anything. All I wanted was to clarify my point. Well, we understand that point now. Please, Nahida, tell us more about what happened. Are those poor people alright? When you left, I was still in the middle of restoring everyone's minds. Thankfully, when the doctor mentioned depositing information into the subconscious, he didn't mean engraving information into their minds. Instead, he did something closer to creating hallucinations. That was still within my power to fix. <laughs> Luckily, I managed to finish my restorations and mind jump away from him just as he was about to capture me. <sighs> what a relief. The doctor sure pulled out some hidden cards, but good thing we had Nahida with us. I wouldn't be relieved just yet. I gave away my true identity when I restored everyone's minds, which means we've lost another one of our trump cards. Also, the doctor is already an expert at modifying Akasha terminals. Maybe it's only a matter of time until he captures my consciousness inside the Akasha. Would that mean you'd no longer be able to jump between minds? Then how do we stop him? He's still at the Academia, so it's possible he already started messing with the Akasha. Uh, our position might get worse at time. Ugh, it feels like he's toying with us. What a nasty piece of work. Plus, the Doctor's combat ability alone is apparently enough to make him worthy of being number two of the Fatui. We shouldn't give up hope just yet. Let's try to find another way to attack this problem. He didn't say he was number two, did he? He's just common knowledge, they're numbers. Actually, Nahida, how did you know we were trying to get to Party's DI? Have you been waiting for us? Yes, I have. I can see the Traveler's elemental energy. So I deduced your destination by looking at the direction you were moving in. Hmm. You didn't come here for sightseeing, right? Did you find any leads? We're looking for a scholar we know. His name is Tainari, and the sages once tried to reach out to him. Why don't you come inside with us and see what we can find? Okay. Let's just hope we won't get him into trouble. I think we'll be fine. Mm, so maybe we should look for our Hayton as well. Traveler? It is you! 
Beisha. I remember the name. Oh, okay, yeah, you. Ah, the voice! It's a Beisha! The voice, not the face. Uh, long time to see. Ah, what a pleasant surprise! It's so nice to see the two of you again. Who's this? She's a scholar we met in the Avidia Forest. When we last saw each other, she was still training in the... Uh... What's it called? Satyavada life? Oh, I see. That's right, we're old friends. Uh, you've come at just we're the friends. right time. Well, Ever since I've come here, hardly anyone has even talked to me. Apasia, you're way too excited about this. Actually, for you to leave the Avidia Forest means... Oh, you're not in training anymore? Wait, no. Did you already finish your training and reach Pari Porno life? <laughs> what do you think? No. My consciousness mm. has already managed to make contact with the Divine. <sighs> you did it? I'm really happy for you. <laughs> it's so exhilarating to share this sublime joy with others at long last. When my consciousness made contact with the gods, ah, uh, what a supreme and unparalleled experience that was. That sounds incredible. Actually, we're here for ten now. Oh, all right. Uh, actually, Oops. please wait. I haven't forgotten my promise to you. What Remember? Promise? I promised to help you understand what you saw from Ermansoul oh. once I gained deeper insights. Alright. My current self has not only gained true insight, but I can even help you establish a direct connection to the consciousness of the Divine. Okay, that seems like a code. You... you can do that? Do you believe her? I've never heard of anything like that, but... If you want to give it a try... I'll do my best to protect your consciousness during the process. Hold on. I brought some spirit borneal with me. This is still a crucial part of the ceremony. Brooks. Uh, we're using that incense again? All right now. Hold my hand. I'll help you establish a pathway to connect your consciousness. So, are people like kind of telepathic? Okay. Ready? It took three betrayals for me to finally understand. The world is just an elaborate tapestry of lies. My fury will never be quelled. The first to betray me was a god, my creator, my mother. Valuing strength above all, she saw no worth in me and I was discarded. The second was a human, my family, my friend. Consumed by fear, he saw me as an abomination. The third was one exactly like me. A hope for the future. A fledgling barely out of the nest. Powerless before his mortality, he broke his promise to me. Humans. They can't be trusted. And the gods fill me with pure loathing. So I said good riddance. <laughs> I denounced the world and laugh in its face. <laughs> My chest will never again be defiled by worldly filth. I will scrub away every last trace of human emotion. Then it will be empty, a blank slate and ready to receive a supreme gnosis, brimming with pure divinity. <laughs> there is no need to fear. The pain will be brief. 
your era is coming to an end. It was expected now. <laughs> A new expression. I don't remember that mouth. What was that? You saw? Uh, this isn't the Great Lord's consciousness, nor King the Shred's consciousness. Did we actually just see the Balladeer's memories? Everything matches what we know about him. Well, we didn't know so much about him. Uh, in fact, if it wasn't for the visuals, we wouldn't necessarily know it was him. But how is he connected to the divine consciousness that Hapasia was talking about? You saw it, right? You felt it, right? Oh, such a majestic god! Such a noble will! Such sublime emotion! Mm. Alas, shame! If only... If only that which beats within my chest wasn't a filthy mortal heart! Oh, oh great and merciful god! Please grant me forgiveness and salvation! Hmm... I thought he was already a bit evil, and that's why the Shogun got rid of him. Do you understand now? I'm afraid this is no peri in a life, but rather... We can't pay patience. Ah! You! Why are you so mean to me? Why is everyone hiding from me? I found divine wisdom. Shouldn't I receive praise and honor? Haven't I uncovered that light in the darkness? Papaya? That's how I always thought everything should be. Wait... Have I... Already lost my mind? Wait, something isn't right! Very close to fighting him. I feel like his story should conclude in Azuma. <sighs> okay, we finally lost him. When did he arrive? We swap places when uh, I don't think she wanted to send us to her body. Were those people she possessing being sent to her body as well? Oh, the traveler's back? Uh, what just happened? Nahida was controlling your body for a while. It seemed like she jumped over to you as an emergency measure right before the Catherine puppet was destroyed. Oh yeah, but she came to me by touching me, not by the Akasha, so yeah, it was different. After that, 
Hainari heard the commotion and came over. He helped us defeat the mercenaries and then he ran with us all the way here. Hmm. This time she didn't just drop her, transfer her mind into my body. What? You swapped places? You mean your consciousness also went into Nahida's body? Wait, then where is Nahida's consciousness? Where is she now? I never imagined that an individual's consciousness could be transferred around like this. Had I not seen it with my own eyes, I would have never believed it. I don't think this can be achieved with current human technology. Also, while we were running, the consciousness in your body told me to pass on a message. She said, The doctor has found a way to trap my consciousness, so I can't journey with you anymore. Mm. But even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. <gasps> oh no! He is trapped in the sanctuary of Sir's daughter for good this time! Was that message all she left for us? It's pretty vague. Mm, it's in a code that only we know. We can let the doctor figure out where up to. Oh, that mm. makes sense! Since the doctor captured her, she won't be able to say anything without him knowing. She's being extra careful. Even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. Mm hmm. Huh. Paimon knows the moon illusions and lies are from the alchemical divination at the Subzeru's festival. Didn't Nahida use a starlight analogy before? It had something to do with Sataria. Hmm? The moon refers to Nahida herself. Oh! That makes a lot of sense. Huh. Do you think Nahida was telling us to go find help in the desert? Uh, I thought those were all the times I could check out all the options. But she isn't with us anymore. Uh, think we'll be okay? It's a moonless night. You said Sanctuary of Surasthana. Does this mean that this Nahida you're talking about, the consciousness who was occupying the Traveler's body, is the Dendro Archon? Mm. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, being in Azuma, everybody knew about her, but the other two places, they're still incognito. Uh, your guess is correct, but the situation's a bit complicated, so it's really hard for us to explain right now. That's all right. A scholar's curiosity doesn't need to be appeased right away. As for the complicated nature of the situation, safe to say I have witnessed that for myself. I've spent some time with you, and it looks like the Dendro Archon's also on your side, so I trust you. Thank you, Tainari. Oh, actually, we came here to ask you a question. What do you know about the project that the Sages have been working on? Ah, that. While I was indeed invited to join that project, the Sages were always secretive about its scope and goals, so I eventually declined. All I know is that that project has something to do with the restoration of Ermansoul. Hmm. I think I know what the project's about. Huh? Did you see something when you were in Nahida's body? Academia is turning the Baladir into a god. What? Ah, uh, that was what that was. I thought it was like a... <laughs> a mecha. Do you have any evidence? Uh... No. A page also showed a so-called divine consciousness. I saw a nascent god under construction. Yeah... Our witnesses aren't that reliable, hmm. but okay. That's not evidence. You describe what you saw when you exchanged consciousness with Nahida. Hmm. So that's what happened. That explains why Hypatia's symptoms were different from those of the other scholars who went mad. It's because she made contact with the consciousness of a new god who is still in the process of being born. 
Kainari, did you leave the Avidia Forest because of Apasia? I did. I noticed Apasia's mental anomalies, but since her symptoms were rather atypical, I secretly took her to Party's DI and began searching for a way to return her to her normal self. If I didn't take action, Hapasia would have already been taken by the Matra to the desert, doomed to a life of exile at Aru Village. Now that you mention it, I knew the Academia has never thought particularly highly of Lesser Lord Kusanali, but... But I still didn't expect them to do something as arrogant as creating a new god. Looks like I made the right decision by not accepting their invitation. Mm, if it is also behind some of this. The Doctor and the Balladeer. We have two Fatui Harbingers in Sumeru. Sounds like we're in for a bad time. From your description, I don't think they've completed their project. There may still be room for us to intervene. But then, what is the connection between creating a new god and restoring Ermin's soul? Yeah, it feels like we're still nowhere close to figuring out the sage's goals. Let's head to the desert for now. Why? We must stop them no matter what. Oh, okay, because uh, one of the options I didn't check. The, the starlight right. was. We've the pretty much done over everything we need to know, so we should head out. How about you, Tainari? What are you going to do? I'll stay here for now. I still want to try a few more things to help Apasia. If you're planning to go into the desert, start by heading for Caravan Rabat. That'll be your fastest route. Come find me here if there's anything else I can do to help. May the spirit of wisdom go with you. Thanks, Kainari. Hopefully, Hapasia will feel better soon. We're off then. Alright. No, there. This scenery is wonderful. Surely enough to convince anyone to become a wanderer. Actually, um, no, whenever I can, I'll, I'll check back on Catherine, see if she, she's back. Repaired. She probably we feels better. We finally made it to Caravan Rebot. It's pretty lively here. So. Just past this wall is the desert, huh? Oh, wow. Paima remembers hearing people call this the Wall of Samiel. It's made to block sandstorms from the outside. Oh, if it's this tall, it's gotta be the divine work of Greater Lord Ruka Devata, right? Mm. Is indeed quite impressive. Enough gawking. Oh. Come on, follow me. Where did he come from? Over here. Oh, he's went that way! Let's hurry up and follow him. Wonder what he's up to. I was just here. The... Where did he go? Uh, how did we lose him? They were just here a second ago. We could beat them up. More Aramite mercenaries? Who are they working for this time? Uh, anyway, Traveler, it seems like we were being followed again. You were too careless. You should have noticed those hopeless amateurs trailing you a long time ago. Uh, we could have shaken them if not too. Uh, we could beat them up. There's no need to thank me. 
I've never cared to keep track of personal favors. All I did was correct a mistake I happened to come across. It's a habit I developed at the Academia. You really get by on a scare, I'll hate them. We never thought we'd run into you here. Last time we met at poor Ormos, didn't you say you were going back to the Academia? <gasps> Wait. Don't tell Paimon that you're here to take us back on their orders! Oh. So you've already landed yourselves on the Academia's hit list. <laughs> I can't say that I didn't expect it. However, had I wished to turn you over to the Academia, don't you think you'd already be the Eremite's honored guests by now? Oh! Right. Um, you do have a point. <laughs> Do you participate in the Sage Speak I have project? no interest in running errands for that project. As a scholar, I've always belonged to the camp that promotes researcher autonomy. <sighs> and these days, you're more fascinating than anything the Sages can offer. Oh, thank you. So, you're actually looking for me? Hmm, not quite. To tell you the truth, I'm still investigating the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Unfortunately, I've run into some difficulties. Everyone says the capsule originated in the desert and was eventually moved to Port Ormos. If I am to get to the bottom of this, I must understand how the capsule first came to be. Which brings me back to you and why you're so interesting. The leader of Ainul Ahmar used the Divine Knowledge Capsule right in front of you, and upon seeing him, your expression became perplexed and you were lost in thought for quite some time. To have that kind of reaction, I think you must have realized something. Are you interested at all in sharing what you've been hiding from me? I really don't remember. I remember the guy became angry. Must be because I was so shocked to hear these words again. Ah, word for me. I'll hate them. You really have a ridiculous eye for detail. What kind of person even notices or remembers stuff like that? Uh, the situation is a little complicated. I can't share what I know just yet. Oh, no. So that's your answer. <laughs> well, I do work for the Academia after all. So considering that, it is indeed wise to keep your cards close to your chest. But that does prove you do have some undisclosed information about the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Am I right? <sighs> no matter. Rather than simply learning the answers from you, I'd still prefer to investigate on my own. Speaking of, you two are also headed to the desert? That's right! We have the same plan as you! But we don't really have any concrete goals at the moment. Then I'd suggest starting with Aru Village. It's the largest settlement in the desert, so it'll probably have more resources and intel than anywhere else. Well, would you like to head there together? Sounds good. It's always better to travel with someone you know. Let's go! Yeah, there are people I know I wouldn't like to travel together with. Time to go! <laughs> oh, it's a different one. Where's the thing? Oh, it's where I need to go. Mm. Time to go. Yeah, we kind of need vehicle vehicles in this game. Ah, uh, there for two here. Time to go. Hmm. Wind strike. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. That an enemy. Time to go. 
refugee shelters that I chose. Archive. Files and oh. a fateful offering. Before us lies Aru Village, the safe haven of the desert folk. Whoa, this landscape is really something else. What a cool place! Let's go check it out. Huh? Wow! Unless my memory fails me, we have barely spoken two words to each other before now at the Academia. Would you care to enlighten me as to when and how I invited the General Mahamacha's wrath? Hmm. Oh, Haytham. Do not think you can escape my judgment just because you managed to escape my attack. <laughs> judgment? So that's how you'd characterize your actions here, is it? Or would elimination perhaps be a more accurate description? Had I used my full strength, not even this traveler would have been able to stop me. I don't know. Though styled like an assassination, I sought only to ensure that my target would be unable to flee or resist. Standard practice for the Matra, as well you know. Seem to me more like your own personal touch. I mean, you just resist. Uh, who, who is that, Al Haytham? Did you call him General Mahamatra? Yes. General Mahamatra Sino. Head of all the Matra at the Academia. He's a formidable hunter, and the ultimate nightmare for any who have committed academic crimes. Hmm. You seem to have placed a lot of trust in Al Haytham, to the point of blocking an attack for him. If I were you, I'd never choose to side with him. I wouldn't believe a single word that comes out of his mouth. I have been pursuing this scribe for a long time. I urge you, stand back and do not seek to defend him any longer. Otherwise, there will be consequences. I don't trust him as much as you seem to think. But he has never lied to me. Uh, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stand by. Uh, oh, has Al Haytham done I'll something stand. wrong? Hyman doesn't think he's as bad as you've made him out to be. I won't waste my breath explaining things. Al Haytham, I saw it during our fight. Take it out. The divine knowledge capsule you're hiding on your person. Unless you want me to retrieve it for myself. Hmm. <laughs> Very perceptive of you. Nothing escapes a mantra's senses. Wait! The Divine Knowledge Capsule? Didn't it fall into the mantra's hands in Port Ormos? Oh, it didn't lie to us. No. He never told us. No wonder you speak with us. such confidence, Sino. But I must admit, 
I'm very curious. What does this capsule mean to you? And why, as General Mahamatra of the Academia, are you all alone in the desert? You think he kind of threats for the desert? As far as I'm aware, the other Matra have been speculating about your disappearance. Have you been given a mission that's, let's say, morally dubious? If I was the real target of your mission, what was stopping you from simply using your authority and resources to judge me within the walls of the Academia? Uh, is your mission contagious? <sighs> I should have known you'd be difficult to deal with. You two! Ugh. What should we do, Traveler? Paimon feels like we can't trust either of them! It's about them. <clears throat> we can't just Well, go. look at you two, acting all tough and self-righteous over there. Don't you have a job? See you. Wait, do you? Great! Finally, someone that we can trust! You gotta help us out here, otherwise these two are gonna start fighting again! Leave them. Yeah, sure looks that way. Two giants from the Academia duking it out once and for all. Not something you get to see every day, that's for sure. Yeah, to bring pop up. Listen, I know you academic types love to fill up your big brains with self-righteous morality and lord your empty rules and virtues over each other. But how dare you bring your petty disputes into the safe haven of Aru village? Hmm. It seems like someone's gonna have to beat some sense into your thick skulls until you finally learn to respect these grounds. Okay, we should just get going. Hmm, <sighs> neither think how far to be distracted by Thea. Hey, did either of you hear a word I just said? The wind is saying whoosh. Another sandstorm? What's up with these recently? Hey! All of you, over here, quickly! We have to take cover! Someone's calling for us! Oh, this wind is too strong! Let's get over there! That sounded like Candace. Ugh, come on, you two! Jeez, are all of you academia folks such hard work? Move it! All right, stop yelling. This is pretty awkward. <laughs> hey, wanna play sardines with three people who wanna tear each other limb from limb? <laughs> sure, why not? Sounds fun. Uh, the air is so thick and heavy. Paimon can hardly keep floating anymore. You probably don't even have a staining animation. My sincere apologies, everyone. This is the home of our village chief. I will have to ask you to make do with this small room until the sandstorm dies down. Please, let me introduce myself. I am hmm? Candace, protector of Aru Village. Ah, our savior has come at last! Nice to meet you, Candace. The name's Paimon. Thank you so much for helping us. You have my gratitude. <laughs> There's no need to thank me. It's only right to help each other when the weather gets rough. Wow, she's so gentle and caring, like a nice older sister. I'm like those guys over there. All right, now that we're all better acquainted, we should return to the topic at hand. As a guardian charged with the responsibility to protect my fellow villagers from harm, I was observing your conflict from afar. 
even before the sandstorm started. And now that you have set foot within our village itself, it is all the more my responsibility to make absolutely sure that you pose no threat whatsoever to us. So please, have an honest and sincere conversation with one another, and put your hostile feelings to rest. If anyone dares to start anything again while they are under this roof, I will not hesitate to send them out for some quality time with the creatures of the Sandstorm. Oh! Uh, on second thought, Paimon may have misjudged Candace's character. Hmm. <laughs> And that goes for you too, Miss Dia. Do I make myself clear? What well, was a shit? <sighs> All right, we got it, Candace. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. So, which of you will begin? I was supposed to be a mediator, but uh, I might have gotten a little too involved just now. Anyway, one of those two should probably start talking. Wait, that was you trying to be a mediator? Really? <sighs> I have nothing to hide, so there's no shame in explaining myself. While all Haytham wasn't wrong about the other Matra not knowing my whereabouts, it's not because I've been assigned a morally dubious mission. Rather, I've chosen to exile myself. Huh? Exile yourself? A little while ago, I discovered that there was data missing in the Academia's project planning and development files. What little they did report clearly did not match the project's actual progress. As General Mahamatra, I had the responsibility and authority to request an audit. However, to my surprise, the person responsible for the erroneous data was none other than Grand Sage Azar himself. I tried to investigate the issue myself before submitting a formal audit request, but I soon found that all leads and potential pieces of incriminating evidence were carefully concealed from me. I began to realize that they were cautious of me from the very beginning. Unsurprisingly, the Grand Sage rejected my audit request as soon as the submission reached his desk. He even said to me, The power of the General Mahamatra is granted by the Sages. You have no right to judge us. Hmm. So they really are up to no good. Why the hell were you attacking your hate? I realized then that to the Grand Sage, the Matra are nothing more than tools for the Sages to assert and maintain their control over knowledge. The vows that we took, the principles that we strive to uphold, they are meaningless to the academia of today. So then you decide to accept yourself. I believed it would be wise to flee the academia before the sages had a chance to take action against me. This way, they can no longer see nor predict my actions. I will never give up on this investigation. There's no need for someone else to give me power or authority. Once I find the truth, I will administer judgment by my own name. Hmm. Sino seems to have the same goal as us. We're all investigating the sages. Yeah. Plus, now that he's no longer the General Mahamatra, he somehow feels a lot less scary. Is it too early to trust him completely? The whole story is just made up. Yeah, well, it could be. Sino. If that's your story, then why did you see all hate them as a target? When I was investigating the matter in the academia, I overheard a conversation between all hate them and a sage. The sages asked you to investigate a blonde haired traveler. Do you dispute this, all hate them? Hmm. Uh, what? Should sure have stuck around with us for longer. Like many parts of the project, this assignment was undocumented. Now throw in your suspicious behavior with the Divine Knowledge Capsule, and I think we deserve an explanation. Hmm. From the very beginning, oh, hey, I'll was... The sages were watching me from the very beginning. Hmm. Yes. 
I was indeed tasked with investigating the Traveler. I'll hate them! After all, the promised reward was so great that hardly any scholar could have refused. The Sage told me, Once you've completed this assignment, I can give you a glimpse of divine knowledge. A most enticing offer. Unfortunately, those academics don't know me at all. Their words contained one key piece of information, namely that divine knowledge indeed exists. That gave me all I needed to know. From my perspective, the sages are far from trustworthy. Think about it. Isn't it a little strange they're so willing to share divine knowledge with anyone, even as a reward? So, I began my own investigation following the lead of the Divine Knowledge Capsule. In the end, I realized my wisdom in committing to this rather than collaborating with the Sages. Had I been less guarded, I probably would have ended up like that Einal Achmar mercenary, incapable of remaining sane for long enough to hold a conversation. You mean... that the Sages originally planned to dispose of you? Using one of those capsules that drive people insane? Parabas, your encounter with me? You join first with me, just so you can investigate I'd me? already given up on the assignment by then. I only told the Academia I was waiting in Port Ormos for you to appear so they wouldn't suspect anything. So it came as quite a surprise when I encountered my erstwhile target while investigating the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Criminals do love to talk about coincidences. Even though I ran into the Traveler by chance, I had no intention of providing assistance to the Academia. Also, you should remember, you were the ones who decided to follow me and strike up a conversation after I left that tavern. And I mentioned yes. things did go like that. Is it enough to prove his innocence? That's true. All of them helped us out at Caravan Rebot as well. Maybe he's telling the truth. I'm willing to apologize, if that's worth anything to you. I took the Divine Knowledge Capsule behind your back because I judged its existence to be a significant risk. I felt that it would be best for no one to interact with it before it had been properly studied. <laughs> After all, curiosity often proves to be the most dangerous thing in this land. You should be well aware, Scribe Alhatham. That curiosity can also lead you to danger and suspicion. Answer me this. Did the Sages share any information about their project with you? Have I not made myself clear? You and I are both distrusted by the Academia. Do you really think they would tell me anything? Fine. Although you haven't completely proven your innocence, I won't regard you as an enemy, for now. As you wish. Mm hmm Good. I'm glad to see you two clearing up your misunderstandings. And now you, Dia. I believe it's your turn. Oh, is it sure oh okay, sorry. Whatever the boys were talking about must have been so boring that I spaced out. Ahem. <clears throat> My situation is pretty straightforward. My employer, Dunyarzad of the Homiyani family, is friends with the Traveler and is currently recovering from her illness at home. I had nothing going on, so I decided to return to Aru Village for a visit. I was actually looking forward to a pretty exciting time getting back together with everyone here. But then I saw these two random guys in the middle of a pointless argument. It ticked me off, and things went downhill from there. Is that all? Well... I will admit that definitely sounds like your style. In that case, welcome back, dear. That's more like it. I missed you all so much, Candace. Oh, there are monsters in the sense. Whoa! What was that sound? No need to worry. Now that you're no longer at each other's throats, please make yourselves at home. I'll take a quick trip outside to clear out some of those creatures in the sandstorm. C creatures In the sandstorm? Uh, are you sure you don't want some backup? Fighting in a sandstorm is not for the faint-hearted. Anyone without extensive training in these conditions is at a disadvantage. You needn't worry. 
Yeah, just leave him to Candace. <laughs> Don't worry, she's as tough as they come. Why do we need to come? The winds died down. That means the sandstorm's over, right? Candace still isn't back yet, though. Is she alright? Maybe we should go out and check on her. When you put it that way, even I'm starting to feel a little worried. All right, let's go. We've been here long enough, and the boys are as chatty as the floor. I thought this Sino and Candice would both be from the desert. And they are dressed kind of like. I thought they would have some relationship, some connection between them. Oh. <laughs> ah, those they show up here as well. Candace, you're still fighting? Dealing with these creatures the entire time? Is she a healer? She probably would need to be a healer. Yes. To fight against those. They just keep so coming in waves. I've lost count of how many I've defeated. <coughs> Before I realized it, even the sandstorm had stopped. Mm -hmm. Not only is she really strong, her stamina is also something else. Hey! Here comes another wave! <laughs> Leave this round to us. I got interrupted earlier, but now I have something to take my anger out on. <laughs> it's been quite a while since I've seen the flame main in action. I'll leave these to you then. I'll be sure to put on a good show. <laughs> Let's go! Clouds high. The birds. Solidify! I can't see. Wind Strider! Here comes another wave! When are they ever gonna let up? The creatures stopped appearing! Was that the last of them? What we fought just now was probably the aftermath of the sandstorm. So we should be safe for the time being. Mm -hmm. Well fought, everyone. No injuries, I hope. Huh? Who are you? Ah, my apologies. I haven't had a chance to greet you yet. I had my hands full taking care of the village's elderly and children. You're part of the elderly. I am the chief of Aru village. Everyone usually calls me Uncle Anpu. It's a pleasure to meet you. Sir, I am also originally from the desert, but I have not been back for some time now. May I ask if such sandstorms are common? Couldn't he have asked the other one, Candace, while in the I can't house? say they've always been common, uh, but recently the storms have become increasingly severe and frequent. Besides sandstorms, we also occasionally get earthquakes. Uh, according to an investigator who stayed in the village a while ago, these unusual natural phenomena are related to the withering of Ermansol. Uh, is there withering here as well? Hmm. Another effect of Ermansol's withering. <laughs> so. Ermansol's withering causes withering zones in the forest, and sandstorms and earthquakes here in the desert? Everything in the natural world is inextricably connected to Ermansol. These regional symptoms can indeed be a reflection of Ermansol's present state. <sighs> Everyone in Aru Village needs to take good care of themselves. Uh, speaking of which, why haven't I seen a single village keeper since I got here? Village Keeper? Who are they? Village Guards like Candace? T 
Does your curiosity know no bounds? Village Keeper is how Aru Village refers to mad scholars, exiled here by the Academia. Oh. Most of them are scholars who lost their sanity after a period of training in the Avidia Forest. Why aren't they sitting in here? The Academia believes that their crazed mutterings may have a negative effect on the psyches of other scholars. So, they're forcibly exiled to the desert. Though if you ask me, it's all a boatload of nonsense. And Nari also brought it to the park. Alas, that's exactly what we've been trying to investigate. One by one, the village keepers have been mysteriously disappearing without a trace. But no one in the village has ever seen them leave. If you're planning to stay around the village for the next few days, I'd appreciate it if you could keep an eye out for them. I've had encounters with those people in the past. I'll see what I can do to help. The Matra are the ones responsible for their exile. Now that you're no longer with them, are you trying to alleviate your guilt and atone for your past sins? <laughs> I'm fascinated by how you think. Mock me if you will. But if you are guilty, I will eliminate you. Regardless of my position or identity. Oh, you're the former General Mahamatra. You must be an expert in these kinds of investigations. Thank you for your help. I'll help you. Is it because you're reminded of Hapasia? Oh, these poor scholars. First they lose their sanity, now this! We need to help get them back home, safe and sound. But, uh, is it really a good idea to tag along with Sino? You seem like you really don't trust him. Mm, that's why it does a great potential. Watch him. Okay. I'll be grateful for the assistance. <laughs> no doubt you will do a better job than some of my former subordinates. Let's start by finding a spot to share what we know so far. Hmm. Even if we don't really know them, we know they are against the academia. So shouldn't we just tell them everything so they could maybe help? I mean the big bad already knows that he that is around, so Although I've sent myself into exile, I'm still doing essentially the same things as before. Do you still have any questions for me before we start our investigation? Uh, why do you refer to the mess scholars as village keepers? One of my former subordinates told me that this title has its origins in a strange incident. The Academia has long exiled mad scholars to Aru village. A mysterious phenomenon exists here. When mad scholars first arrive, they are as incoherent and deranged as before. But, after spending some time here, they invariably begin to calm down. Initially, the people of Aru village greatly resented having to take in the mad scholars. But a strange incident one night changed that. Aru Village was struck by the strongest earthquake in living memory. Seeing buildings on the verge of collapse all around him, the then chief of the village was preparing to take everyone to safety. Suddenly, he noticed a mad scholar crouching in a corner, caressing the ground with his hands. A soft, green light radiated from him, like a divine glow against the backdrop of night. Despite the powerful tremors that ripped through the ground that night, all the houses remained upright, almost as if they had grown roots reaching deep into the ground. In the end, not a single building collapsed, and no one was hurt. After that, the people of Aru village treated the mad scholars with greater kindness, and began to refer to them as the village keepers. Soft green light? A mad scholar protecting Aru village? Hmm. What do you make of it, Traveler? 
Must have been like the spark. Paimon thinks so too. Actually, Sino, do you know if any of the mad scholars continued to wear their Akasha terminals at Aru Village? In theory, they would continue wearing them so the academia could still monitor their activities. With that said, the main Akasha system would no longer have any interaction with them. Oh, no wonder! Everything makes sense then! Add in the fact that they calmed down, it was probably Nahida who calmed them. If you are able to draw a conclusion from this one story alone, then it appears you possess much more information than I do. So, what do you make of the story? Uh, that Mad Scholar's power likely came from Lesser Large Kuzanali. Lesser Large Kuzanali was actually the one who protected the village. Really? Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hmm. What? You don't believe us? Lesser Lord Kusanali was definitely using the Akasha to give her power to the Mad Scholars! No. It's not so much that I don't believe you. I'm just struck by your reasoning. Lesser Lord Kusanali, the current Dendro Archon. Is she really active in Sumeru? The Academia has always placed far greater importance on the late Greater Lord Rukadevata. They've more or less ignored Lesser Lord Kusanali, and I've never had any reason to doubt their views. In addition, I've never heard any stories about Lesser Lord Kusanali and her deeds. To me, she might as well have been a god that never existed. No way! Nahida definitely exists! She's a... How should Paimon put it? She's a good Archon who's kind and wise. Even if she says weird stuff sometimes. Uh, she's also saved me once not long ago. We saved some our city together in the not so distant past. I've spent many years interrogating criminals. So I can easily tell when someone is lying. Good! Then you should know that we're telling the truth! That look in your eyes... <laughs> I've never seen that from a liar. You two really must have met Lesser Lord Kusanali. How can this be? To think... Our Archon has been amongst us this entire time. Alright, now it's our turn to put our skills to good use for this investigation. You betcha. But easier said than done. Especially since we don't have any leads. Hmm. Maybe we can start by knocking on some doors. Excuse me, are you here to help me find my grandpa? Huh? Who are you? By the sounds of it, a resident of this village. My name is Isak. You'll help me find my grandpa, right? Is your grandpa a mad scholar? Hey, don't say that. Grandpa is just grandpa. Why do you have to call him that? It's not like he's a bad person or anything. Oh, you can be mad and still be a good person. <sighs> the person you're referring to is not a local. Yet you are. Why do you call him Grandpa? Grandpa is just Grandpa. He's my family. I, I heard everything you said to the village chief. Please, you gotta take me with you. I, I wanna find my Grandpa. I, I swear I'll help. I won't be a nuisance. Ah, so you're the one who was eavesdropping on us around the village chief's house. I was planning to go out and take care of whoever it was. But I had a vague feeling that they didn't harbor any ill intent. Whoa! Oh, Ethan wasn't kidding about Matra having sharp senses. Sino, he's just a kid! All he wants is to find his grandpa! Let's find a way to help him! Sorry, I was only listening in because I wanted to know where grandpa went. Honest, if you don't believe me, you can ask Miss Candace. Please help me. All right. But first, let's confirm the facts with Candace. Come on. Keep up.
Rush into the shift house. Tinoi is like. Sino is super vigilant. Is this what all the Matra are like? Ah, you're back already. We just wanted to confirm something with you. Do you know a boy by the name of Isak? <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling he'd go looking for you. Huh? You knew this would happen? Yes. Although he tried his best to stay hidden, I still noticed him eavesdropping outside the window. He really wants to get his grandfather back. Isak's parents were both Aramite mercenaries who rarely returned to the village after finding employment in the city. He was raised by his grandfather. Unfortunately, it was only a few years before his grandpa passed away. Isak was still very young at the time, so various families in the village took turns caring for him so he could survive. Later, an elderly mad scholar arrived at the village. Isak thought the scholar bore a striking resemblance to his grandfather, and thus often spied on the man. However, the scholar was unkempt in appearance and incoherent in speech. Although Isak referred to the man as his grandpa, he was afraid and didn't dare to approach him. One summer night, the oft mumbling and bumbling grandpa suddenly calmed down and seemed to become more lucid. He even noticed Isak hiding in the distance. So Grandpa walked up to Isak and patted him on the head. He even took Isak to the entrance of the village, where he patiently taught the boy the names of the stars and accompanied Isak until he fell asleep. The next morning, Isak woke up and wanted to go find his Grandpa again, only to realize his Grandpa no longer recognized him. However, even so, Grandpa retained his calm expression. It's said that those who saw the scholar claimed he no longer appeared to be crazy, but appeared to be living in his own world, almost as if he were sleepwalking. Isak was thrilled that his grandpa was able to find peace and would follow him all the time, asking him things like, Grandpa, want me to take you somewhere fun? Or, Grandpa, could you tell me stories about the stars again? All this somehow just makes Paimon feel really sad. It seems like they both deserve so much better. Perhaps. Nearly everyone who lives in the desert has some form of hardship or regret. But even so, we must still continue on with our lives. It's also my reason for fighting. I must continue to protect this land. Those grandpa was part of that hidden. She must have suited the other bad scholars as well. Hmm. From the look of Sana's face, she's probably gonna connect the dots as Maybe well. Maybe the people have always had a considerate god watching over them. Huh? What did you say, Sino? No, nothing. As long as Esau keeps his word and doesn't get in our way. We can take him along. Perhaps you are more compassionate than I gave you credit for. Please accept my thanks on Isak's behalf, Sino. Isak? Oh, it's you guys! We've cleared everything up! Let's go find your grandpa! Really? Wow! Thank you so much! Uh, your grandpa will be found sipping some. Yeah! We don't know that. Alright. Let's ask the local residents some questions first. Uh, wouldn't it be better to investigate with a local? They like Candice. Shouldn't she 
know better Excuse me. about stuff. Did you too. happen to see where the missing scholars went? <laughs> you mean the village keepers? Oh, let me think. When I was eating dinner the other day, I saw one of them by the side of the road, muttering away and eating mushrooms and tree roots. They shouldn't go around eating that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. Um, did you notice anything else? Anything else? Hmm. No, I think that's all I have to tell you. Sorry. And you just turn your back to me like that? We're trying to help here. We weren't rude or anything. Oh. Wrong button. The scholars that have gone missing. Have you seen them? Ah! Those eyes. Those fierce eyes. You. You look like a real fighter. Don't final. change the subject. Are the kids right? You were asking about the vi I mean, the mad scholars. I think it's been a few days since I last saw them. I usually go to bed pretty early, so I'm not too familiar with what goes on at night. But honestly, I feel quite sympathetic towards them. Even though they act a little strange, they've helped me in the past. If it weren't for them, my house would have collapsed long ago. Do you also think Grandpa and the others are good people? Grandpa? Oh, hello there. It's little Isak. You mean that nice man who looks like your grandpa's long-lost twin, right? <laughs> he was actually the one who protected my house. I saw it with my own eyes. He happened to be staying near my house that day and was doing something with his hands on the ground. It still feels pretty surreal now that oh, I think perfect. back on it. Did someone teach them how to do that? Well, whatever the case, I'll always be thankful to him and whoever taught him to look out for others. I'm pretty sure that if I ever went mad, I wouldn't be able to do anything like that. Gotcha! Thank you! Oh, a flat. Keep up. Uh, sir, have you seen my grandpa recently? You know, the one who likes to sit and space out near the village entrance. Oh, well, if it isn't Isak. Oh, your grandpa, huh? Hmm, it's been a while. The last time I saw him, he was pacing out by the road as usual. I went and asked him if he'd like any of the food I had prepared, despite my wife's protests. Like many people, she's really quite terrified of them. <sighs> and speaking of my wife, she's still always complaining about how I don't make enough mora. That might explain why she's always mad at me. Uh, you're changed oh, subjects. Oh, thank you. Thank you for taking care of him. <laughs> it was nothing. You're looking for him, right? Did he go for a walk and get lost? Yeah. Ooh, that's no good. Well, once you found him, come by my place again and I'll cook a little something for the both of you. I've known you since you were very young. So as far as I'm concerned, you're family. Please feel free to come by any time. Wow, what a nice guy! Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh huh? What's wrong? Did something happen? Don't say anything for now. Hmm. Isak, stay here. Let's head over there. Stay quiet as you move. Hmm. Oh, we just heard it now? Or it's just not... Capture. Uh, there.
Listen, see if you can make out what they're saying. Have you heard? The mighty Scarlet King, the sovereign of our faith, will soon return to this world. Yes, of course I have. The Scarlet King is the one and only true ruler of this land. I've never believed in any other gods. Yeah, real people talk like that. Still, you say he's coming back, but it sure doesn't feel like life's about to change around here anytime soon. What's your proof? Haven't you noticed? The village has been getting more deranged scholars than ever. Uh, are they missing? Delavar was saying that many people also went insane just before the fall of the Scarlet King civilization in ancient times. We don't quite know why, but it seems like there's some sort of connection between insanity and the Scarlet King. And that doesn't sound good for the king. Isn't it a sign of the Scarlet King's power that all the mad scholars have disappeared? If you ask me, they must have been chosen as the final sacrifice for the Scarlet King's resurrection. Huh. Now that you say it, that does make some sense. <laughs> does this mean our lives are finally going to take a turn for the better? Exactly. Those city folks will get what's coming to them. Now, repeat everything you've just said from the very beginning. Huh? Who are you? Where did you come from? My patience is running thin. You heard what I asked. Oh. Oh. Cool. Yeah. B bro, this guy's something else. Just look at his eyes. One wrong move, and he's gonna flay us alive. Yeah, he really is the Desert Razor. Let's not get on his bad side, okay? I am no match for this guy. Oh, okay, good sir. W what is it you would like to know? Tell me about the Scarlet King's resurrection. Well, I... I only know a few things from hearsay. I went for a drink the other day and heard others talking about a rumor that the Madmen will disappear and that the Scarlet King will return to this land. I'm not making this up, I swear! <sighs> hey, go on, keep talking. It's true. It's all true, sir. We desert folk have had more than enough of those people at the academia. They keep sending us all their mad scholars and won't let us have a good life. Would you want to live like this if you were in our place? The radicals were even more thrilled than me when they heard the news. We're all praying for the Scarlet King's speedy return. Delavar also said that once the Scarlet King returns to our side, it's only a matter of time before we conquer the land on the other side of the wall. They're all willing to serve under the Scarlet King and fight for a share of the glory. Is that so? Uh, seems like he still wants to know more. Keep talking. Ah, uh, got it. I, uh, at first I told myself it was just the drink talking. But then all the mad scholars vanished without a trace, just as the rumors said. P please don't beat me up just for mentioning these rumors. I if I'm guilty, then everyone else around here is also guilty. I'm just saying what the others said. The people here really like the Scarlet King, but dislike the Dendro Archon. The Academia is probably the true target of their hatred. Where is this radical person you talked about? I haven't run into him over the past few days, so he probably hasn't been around the village. What about you, man? Have you seen him at all? Uh, no, uh, not at all. We wouldn't dare lie to you. He's really not here right now. Sounds like you're not too close with the radicals. Uh, no, uh, of course not. All we know are their names. I have many ways to stop you from talking and many others to stop you from sending warning messages. So you'd best just stay home and hope I don't hear of you trying to contact anybody. Don't do anything until I've gotten to the bottom of this. Try something foolish, and even Candace won't be able to protect you. 
Yes, yes, got it. We'll do just as you say. Ooh, that scared Paimon half to death. Sino is pretty terrifying. You think I'm not one of your enemies? <laughs> he didn't try to reassure us at all. It's like he's used to hearing that. Oh, Paimon bets lots of people have told him that before. Are there more reason for you to not get on his bedside? I heard that. What was that? Is that true? Ah, sorry. Sorry. It's part of being a matra. The rumor we heard just now seems like a strong lead. But we need to check a few more places. Maybe we could check the scholar's homes. Oh, they have actual houses. Maybe we'll find something there. Very well. Isaac! Uh, I am here! Where's your grandpa's house? Well, I can take you there. Just follow me. Grandpa, oh, he likes to be alone. Uh, sometimes he stares at the sky in a daze, and other times he just pokes at the ground with his fingers. Every now and then, he yells out at the top of his lungs, so a lot of people are really scared of him. But he's a good person, really. I know he is. I swear, he, he's just like my real grandpa. where Grandpa usually stays. There sure isn't much here. What's that smell? Mm, China, did you catch a faint whiff of incense? No. No? Razor will have. Incense? Uh, please don't say it's the same one as before. It's definitely that one. But are you okay? Are you getting dizzy or need to lie down? There's a scent that you can sense, but I can't. Mm. A certain traveler here once passed out from that smell. Thankfully, Tainari saved the day! And then he gave us a long lecture to explain all about how it worked. So, you know Tainari. Huh? You know him too? Are you two friends? Doesn't everybody know Tainari? Yes. No, oh, but you are actual friends. Mm. It's the ears. Now that I concentrate, I can also make out the scent of incense. Wait, surely Tainari didn't lecture you too? No, no need. Uh, I can't handle the scent very well. Okay. Did you first encounter this scent at Tainari's house? Uh, didn't we got like image from it? Uh, no, it was in forest where a skull was meditating. In the forest, from a scholar. Yeah, if scholars use that insane shooting, you know uh, about the smell. Uh, let's keep looking for more clues. It'd be more efficient if we split up. No, no, let's go together. Oh, where did Grandpa go? Please come home, Grandpa. Goods. They are. These are all daily necessities. Tent. Plus, like someone has been living in here the entire time. Oh, so, it was pointless to look around. There are plenty of hmm. footprints. What are you looking for, Sino? Here it is. Footprints. Take a look right here. Uh, Paimon doesn't see anything. 
Although the traces have been completely buried in the sand, there are footprints here. Uh, hang on, we can see footprints below the sand. From the size and shape, they belong to an adult male. This pattern is a common one from this area. Local shoes. This was probably someone from the village. Well, we have a show with the The scent is here. quite faint, but still extant. The footprints head in the direction of the door. You mean someone else has been here? But who would come looking for Grandpa? He doesn't have any friends. We'd have to ask whoever lured him away with the incense. Lured him away, so that's what happened. Uh, huh? So you can lure someone away with just a scent? Sure. Oh, you guys don't have cartoons here. You get lured away by food all the time. Hey! What's wrong with liking good food? Everyone's got something they love in life. Exactly. Most scholars are fond of incense, since the smell supposedly helps them clear their minds and discover new knowledge. Even deep within the clutches of madness, they still yearn for their knowledge-seeking days, and will follow the scent whenever it presents itself. No, Grandpa. So, someone's taking advantage of their weakness? Huh. Still, why would anyone want to abduct all the scholars? Is it to resurrect King Deathstretch? We always say King Deathstretch. Everybody else always says Scarlet King. Are the rumors really true? That's the only lead we have so far. Could the disappearance of all the mad scholars have something to do with the radicals? It's highly likely. Please, you have to save my grandpa. Grandpa's never done anything wrong. Please help him. Sounds like we'd better help get him back. Don't you worry, Isak. We won't let whoever took him get away with it. Let's head to Aru Village and inform Candace and the others about what we learned here. After that, we'll set off to find the uh, scholars. We send Isaac back to tell the others, and we head along. Darker fabric definitely looks a lot better. That'd be my choice, too. We're back, Candace! We've got a lot to tell you! Ah, welcome back. <laughs> Sounds like everyone's friends already. Oh, Dia's here, too! You bet! So, everything goes smoothly? Where's all hate then? Reasonably. Hmm? I'll hate them didn't go with you? I thought it was with you. We haven't seen him at all. Huh. I saw him around the village entrance earlier and figured he was investigating with you. I guess he must have gone off on his own. Did you find out anything useful? Okay, some day yet, everything you learned. I see. So someone used a kind of incense to lead the exiled scholars away from the village. The Resurrection of the Scarlet King? First I've heard of it. Far as I know, the kind of incense you just mentioned is only popular beyond the wall. Mm. Scholars are fond of it, but as you can see, there aren't many scholars still studying around these parts. No seller would be able to make a profit here. Not to mention making incense is a labor-intensive process. You won't see anybody in the desert with the patience to make or sell something that requires that kind of effort. It seems someone from beyond the wall must have been supporting this. Makes sense. They didn't even notice the guys playing on us. Hmm. So what should we do then? Do we go back to the academia and search for leads there? If it was any other day, that would be your next logical step. But today, you've got me on your team. So you get an extra tip. Do 
Didn't you say that the villager got his news from the tavern? Well, I also like to drink at the tavern, so I know a thing or two about these radicals he mentioned. If Paimon remembers correctly, the leader of the radicals is some guy called Delavar. Ah, yeah. Delavar, the scar-riddled bandit, Enger, the wide-eyed butcher, and Jabari, the duck-tailed bearded crook. The whole lot of them are known around these parts. Mm, I feel like I've heard this name somewhere before. No. These guys have one thing in common, and that's being broke. The rougher life gets, the more they want to believe in the Scarlet King. The way they see it, the Scarlet King's resurrection is their only chance at overthrowing the Academia. Throwing all of Sumeru into chaos is the only way to change the way of life here in the desert. Anyway, that's my guess why they've chosen to become radicals. Tia! You're amazing! You really know this place inside and out! Tia? Me? What? Uh, they swing at me? Maybe I should stay quiet for now. <laughs> no merc can afford to slack off on gathering intelligence. Every more I've spent in the tavern has been a valuable investment. Let's head out. Hmm? Now hold on, you're staying right here, Sino. <clears throat> Why? Aru Village is not a big place. Outsiders stand out here like a sore thumb. I'd bet word about you has already gotten out. Um, he's from the desert. He looks more local than. The desert is the unforgiving, so the way of life here is also a lot tougher than on the outside of the wall. You survive on making connections out here. T compared to you, mercs like me are just third-rate amateurs. I've got no actual fighting skills to speak of. But that also makes it a whole lot easier for me to gain the locals' trust. Mm -hmm. I need to go around and ask some questions. But it'll be difficult if you're with me. <sighs> Fine. Good. Then we've got a plan. The Traveler and Paimon will go to Caravan Rebot with me, and we'll try our best to figure out where the Mad Scholars have been taken. Sino, you'll have to stay in the village and continue investigating on your own. All right! Sounds like a plan! That was a lazy excuse. Sino, please don't take offense. I'm sure Dia just wants to help everyone solve their problem as quickly as possible. That's why she can be so straightforward at times. I don't mind. Ah, I see. Well, from the way you were staring out into the distance, I thought you might have been mulling over Dia's words. <sighs> no, I'm used to being treated that way. It's natural to fear strength. I take no objection to it. We're going back there. The guy was taken to the other side. Towards the desert. Can't we just follow the smell of saint? Uh, well, here we are again! Sounds like you're starting to get familiar with the area. Paimon's no, I just have parted. Every time we see the wall of Samiel. How can a wall this tall even exist? It's almost unreal. I know what you mean. I had the same question every time I walked this way when I was a kid. I don't know, it kinda looks like mountains. Also, why is this high wall here? And can a wall really block sandstorms? The chasm looks more unnatural than that. It was only after I grew up that I realized the wall of Samiel isn't just there to keep out the sandstorms. It serves a more important purpose, keeping out people like us. Sumeru is run by wise and mighty sages. To them, us desert dwellers are nothing but tools that can be used and discarded at their whim. We're cheap labor, like livestock, but easier to control. Nothing more. Even if a child from the desert got the chance to obtain an Akasha terminal, 
almost all their requests for knowledge would be denied. The Academia believes we're underserving. Geniuses like Sataria are one in a million. The other children never get a single chance to try and rewrite their fate, even though the Academia knows very well that we're humans, just as they are. That's terrible! I would tear down this wall with my own hands if I could. Um, I understand how she feels. We understand how she feels, but I hope she doesn't do anything to rescue her. Hey, Thea, uh, you're not thinking about doing anything scary, are you? Uh, no, not at all. This place just gets me thinking, that's all. Besides, we're here to procure information, aren't we? Yep, we gotta catch those... Pokemon. Shh. Caravan Rebot is crawling with people, so be careful what you say. We don't want anyone to find out what we're here for. Our mission started the moment we arrived here. Let's go check out the tavern. Maybe we'll find someone I know. Just our luck. None of them are here today. You mean, you don't see anyone you know? Dia, is that you? <laughs> what a coincidence. You here for a drink too? Hmm? Zaki? <laughs> Finally, a friendly face. You should be the only one around. Oh, and who do you have with you it here? The only one Guests around. from another land? Hello, nice to meet hello, you. Hello, hello. I'm Zaki. Dia's, uh, how would you put it? Drinking buddy? <laughs> We've had drinks together a few times. You could say we go back a ways. Anyway, as far as my friends here, they aren't too shabby, are they? You rarely see any outlander so friendly and respectful nowadays. Hmm? Absolutely. <laughs> Much better than those people on the other side of the wall. So, Dia, are you looking for someone? Yeah. Is Have you seen Enger, Delavar, or Jabari just... recently? Mm. Of course I have. Matter of fact, we were all here drinking together just a few days ago. Mm. I've got a spice trading deal from another nation. I thought maybe Delavar and his friends might be interested. Know where I could find him? Ah, how thoughtful of you. Then I assume you also know that Delavar's been having a hard time making ends meet these days. So, you came here to help him out? Hey, keep it down. Let's just say I prefer to keep this deal a secret. Y'all at Caravan Rebot are like family. If there's more to be made, why not do it together? Besides, Delavar and his friends have muscle. They'd be a good fit for escorting the goods. <laughs> yes, how considerate of you. Delavar's my friend, too, so of course I can take you to him. Come with me. Oh, well, we know the guy at all, but we don't know where he lives. What? Huh? What? We just. Oh. Keep up. Are we there yet? Yep, this is the place. This place is practically deserted. What are they doing in a place like this? <laughs> Why don't you take a guess? Go on, a wild stab in the dark. <laughs> You're like lambs to the slaughter. Uh. Oh no! It's an ambush! 
Easy. Uh, what's this all about, Zaki? Come on, Dia. You really think we didn't hear about what you said back in Aru village? The boys have kept a close eye on you from the moment you set foot there. Not only do I know that you're looking for Delavar, I also know that you've teamed up with people from the Academia to look for the missing scholars. Yeah, I shouldn't I not have heard somebody so, was listening you've been to watching us. us from the very beginning? Oh, look at me. Uh-oh. Paima knew leaving Sino behind was a mistake. <laughs> and you left the strongest one in the village, didn't you? Who do you think you are? You really thought we'd fall for your little business deal nonsense? We can take that and make him talk. So you and Delavar have been partners all along. <laughs> Dia, I guess it's only natural for a traveling mercenary like you to be out of the loop. Those of us who hang around the tavern have stronger bonds than you think. But you got one thing right. We're all looking forward to an uprising in Sumeru. There's nothing more we'd like to see than the desert folk overthrowing the Academia. If that's the case, then I'm sure Delavar wouldn't miss a second of it. I'll be honest with you. If it weren't for what you said in the village, your little monologue about the Wall of Samuel would have convinced me that you're one of us. Delavar. And Enger. You're here too, huh? Long time no see, Miss Mercenary. You should have known the traitors are what us followers of the Scarlet King despise the most. Dia, I thought that you, a fellow desert dweller, would understand that the Scarlet King is greater than the Dendro Archon. Little did I know, you don't deserve to join us. <laughs> yeah, gee, what a missed opportunity. Adopting radical views and kidnapping innocent scholars, all because of some baseless rumors? Anything else I'm missing out on? See? There you have it. Mercenaries are just a bunch of faithless scum with only one thing on their minds. Mora. Pathetic. You're all like a pack of street rats. You're not wrong. Mercenaries are driven by Mora, and my faith lies with whoever's paying me. As long as there's a profit to be made, anyone can become my friend. Enough talking! Get him! <laughs> Just as I expected. Let's teach him a lesson, traveler. Look long enough. Following orders. Shit, shit. Gather. One with the forest. Take that. Fallen leaves. Adorn my knight. Impossible. <laughs> How could you? So, what do you think about your meticulous network now, Zaki? How did you say it? It's only natural for a traveling mercenary like me to be out of the loop. I'm guessing your informant told you that I'm just an incompetent merc with no real fighting skills, correct? I mean, that is what I said after all. And of course you would believe everything he reported. The only thing you know about me is that I'm a mercenary, but you've never seen me in action. Even though you heard we went to handle monsters together, you believed that Candace was the only one doing all the real fighting. That so-called Flame Mane is just a fraud. She admitted it herself. She just uses her connections to gain the trust of others. That's what you thought, right? Ugh. You lied in the village because you figured that we'd have people watching you. And you were stupid enough to fall for it. I figured as much the first time we drank together. You all thought you were so smart. Pathetic. Sauce kick. Okay, that should be all of them. Whoa! So you've been planning this since we were in Aru Village? No task can be done without preparation. I just happened to notice a couple suspicious-looking people while you were out investigating. Oh, but instead of catching them right away, you let them report back! Those two who were snooping around were just a couple small fries. If we want to get the real catch, we have to be patient and give it some time. 
Oh, those names are mentioned. Oh, you mean the funny names she mentioned back in Uncle Ampu's house? The Wide-Eyed Butcher, Scarbrittle Bandit, uh, um, Paimon can't remember them all. That's just a bunch of drunk talk. Enger and Delavar like to talk themselves up when they're drinking. Enger the Wide-Eyed Butcher and Delavar the Scar-Riddled Bandit are the nicknames they came up with for themselves. Alcohol has a way of making people share what they really think. So Enger and Delavar are always rambling in the tavern about how the Scarlet King is a superior deity. Oh. What, what they about doing? Zaki? He's just a numbskull who fell right into our trap. Zaki was probably the best hidden of them all. My initial plan was to find Delavar first, and then try to track him down. So, who's the Dr. Bridget Crook? That's what oh. you wanted to ask when we were at Uncle Anpu's house, right? Jabari is one of the villagers you talked to. You know, the one who wanted to treat Isak and his grandpa to some food. Wait, so he's a radical too? No, he isn't. I just needed to tack on a random villager name to make the eavesdropper think that I was making some wild guesses based on my impressions. Wow! What a genius idea! Well, that's an expert mercenary for ya! Ah, you're too kind. It was straight from the usual playbook, if I'm honest. So, that thing you were saying before, is it really true? Hmm? About what? About how mercenaries only oh. care about Mora, and that anyone's a friend as long as there's a profit. Does that bother you? I don't think you're that kind of person. What makes you so sure? Because even without an employer, they're still helping us out. Uh... Dia, do you dislike the Dendro Archon like the other desert folk? <laughs> you two are pretty sharp. No. I don't have anything against the Dendro Archon. I've heard a lot of nice things about the Lesser Lord from Dunyarzad. I can understand her devotion and gratitude. Dunyarzad's just an ordinary person. There's no way a god would be so involved in the lives of everyday people, unless they were truly compassionate. I've begun to realize that the Sages are behind everything that's happened recently. The Radical's blind belief in the Scarlet King, making the Dendro Archon out to be an enemy. It's all the Academia's trickery. But I see through it all. And unlike them, I can never be hostile towards anyone who's never done anything wrong. Dia. Anyway, looks like we're done with business here. Traveler, lend me a hand. Let's tie him up and bring him to the village. This should be all of them. I'll let you take it from here. All right. I'll be in touch. Until then, please stand by. Candace, do you need any help? Candace will be okay on her own. I trust her, so you can too. They are just kidnap people. She's been guarding Aru Village for quite some time now. If anyone is qualified to question the offenders, it's her. While I'm questioning them, why don't you pass some time by exploring the area? I'll meet you back here tomorrow morning, Traveler. Sounds good. As for these idiots, let's just hope they live to see another day. Okay. You heard the question! Now answer me! Ugh! Candace is an expert at dealing with people like this. All we have to do is wait for her word. Oh, our guard. Hello, what can I help you with? Things are going fine. That's good. If you run into trouble, remember to call the guards. Uh, so, the old fellow Ambo likes to say, uh, Come to me if you have any trouble. Please don't bother him with every little thing. Uh, I know 
him since we were children, then I left the village to seek some more opportunities and then business. Made a living as a mercenary, the manual labor, I tried just about everything. When I came back, he already became become a do everything myself kind of naggy old man. Unexpected, but still. And that's why I volunteered to become a guard. Apart from going on patrol, I also helped lighten his load somewhat. Oh, but I think I'll stop around here. Better not stay too close to the door. Uh, let me just see if I can get him. No, not today. Okay, I. This starts getting quite interesting, so I should play against some. There's also the event, but there are probably things not unlocked yet. Okay, five days to unlock. Okay, so in at least five days, I'll start that. Alright. Mm. 